Major Garrett joins us from North Charleston. Major, let's talk about the back and forth between Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Was there a clear winner between the two, and did Senator Cruz quash the birther issue? Look, that's going to be for voters to decide. I have talked to people close to the Cruz campaign who believe this whole birther issue, Ted Cruz being born to, in Canada to an American mother, and questions that Donald Trump is very intentionally planted about Cruz's eligibility for the presidency have done some damage to Cruz's internal numbers in Iowa. Now, as to whether or not he has put this issue to rest or not, we're going to find out in a couple of weeks. But the Cruz campaign knows its initial response, which was to dismiss this charge, did not work out nearly as well as it had hoped, and it had to engage this issue much more aggressively and, in some instances, a bit more angrily than it had in the past to try to get back some of the lost momentum. Now, one thing that's really interesting about last night, for weeks, Ted Cruz told reporters, you know, you guys want me to crawl into a cage match with Donald Trump. I'm not going to do that. Well, last night he did. You have to ask yourself why. Because Cruz knows he's in a very tough battle with Trump in Iowa, and his numbers, if not declining necessarily, and there's some indication that they were, are not as strong as Cruz would like. So he had to engage. He had to abandon his old strategy, the non-aggression pact with Trump, and become much more aggressive. That creates a different dynamic. Now, Cruz supporters and Trump supporters see them clashing in ways they never did before. What effect will this have? Well, the Cruz campaign couldn't wait to figure out if that was a good tactic or a bad tactic because the one they were using, not engaging, wasn't working. That's the biggest takeaway from last night. And they will now go back to their respective stump speeches and face to face campaigning styles, huge rallies for Trump, more intimate gatherings for Cruz, especially in Iowa, and get back to their sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat on the campaign trail, but on the big debate stage, they ended the mutual non-aggression pact, and now the voters are going to have a new look at this relationship and decide for themselves what it means to them and ultimately what it means to this race in Iowa. It certainly was an interesting dynamic last night. In response to Cruz's comments about New York City values, the New York Daily News has this to say, drop dead Ted. Trump talked about that on MSNBC earlier. Let's listen to what he said. I thought that Ted did not have a good night last night, and I thought his hit on New York was disgraceful, frankly. And I guess a lot of people are saying that yeah. now from what I hear. But I thought the, because I haven't been to sleep yet, okay? <laughs> you know, I came in from great South Carolina to great Iowa. I mean, we have some great places. But, uh, so I just got off the plane. But a, a lot of people are hitting him for what he said about New York. I thought it was terrible. And you know, you have offended about 20 million people. That's a lot of people. Major, typically comments like Cruz's tend to resonate with conservative voters, but since Trump invoked 9-11 in his response, could there be a different fallout? Well, one of the things that that clash indicated was the very different campaign approach that Cruz and Trump have. Cruz has a methodical approach to his campaign, which is to basically bury himself within the most socially conservative and ideologically and culturally conservative part of the Republican Party and reinforce that at every single opportunity. So when New York values came up, he saw that as an opportunity to reattach himself, to ingratiate himself even more with those of culturally conservative values, socially conservative values in Iowa and elsewhere. That is the entire modus operandi of the Cruz campaign. What he didn't anticipate was Donald Trump saying, what he did, which is not only am I a New Yorker, not only do I embrace everything that New York is about, but 9-11 is a deeply personal experience to me. It is sort of the prism through which I view a lot of things, my life, my career, my success as a real estate tycoon, and my approach to national security and America's greatness. And from that perspective, the Trump campaign felt very good about what that exchange showed, not only about Cruz, but also about Trump. Many in the Trump campaign afterwards called it his most presidential moment, his softest moment, and yet his most persuasive moment of any of the primetime debates. They left feeling he got the better of that exchange. Major, I want to ask you about a development today. Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican, says he is going to endorse Jeb Bush. What could the impact of that endorsement be? Well, Lindsey Graham is a well-known and well-respected and in some quarters revered figure here in South Carolina. And he has, for his Senate career, carved out a reputation as a national security spe specialist. 
He said in many of the debates, they were undercard debates, all of them, that he had made more trips to Iraq and Afghanistan and knew these Middle Eastern and national security and terrorism issues better than anyone else. And he clearly, in his campaign, thought he would do better based on that resume. He did not. He barely registered a single digits in any of the polls nationally, Iowa, New Hampshire. He doesn't have a lot of organization here to give to Jeb Bush. He doesn't have a tremendous amount of popularity within the conversation of a presidential nomination fight to give to Jeb Bush. But I guarantee you what he's going to say is Jeb Bush is the adult in the room. Jeb Bush is the one who understands these issues better. Jeb Bush is the one I'm going to support. And if Jeb Bush can make it here to South Carolina and keep his campaign going, after Iowa and New Hampshire, which I would suggest is very much an open question, Lindsey Graham at the margins could provide some assistance. All right, Major Garrett Forrest, thank you.